So welcome to our eighth annual Communication Alumni Panel. And we have alumni here from literally all over the place. And I will let them introduce themselves to you. What we'll do is we'll let each one speak about their journey in communication since they left the university. And after we get done with that, we will take questions from all of you. So be thinking about things that you might want to ask them in regards to perhaps um, some of these have experience with graduate school, some of them have experience in different areas of communication and um, work. Um, you might want to ask them about job searches, resume, interviews, portfolios, etc. So welcome. And we will start with, I uh, think Alexis came the farthest from Georgia this morning to be with us. Hey everybody, I'm Alexis. I know some of you, I think. Um, I graduated in 2015. I obviously communication major. Um, when I graduated, I had it was the job searching was kind of hard, but um, I've been I'm on my third job <laughs> since 2015. Um, I did some TV commercial companies like the Brady's and Nielsen and whatever, but. Um, now I work for a radio station in Rome, Georgia, and um, and going to graduate school. I graduated in March, and I'm getting my master's in public administration with a specialization in nonprofit management and leadership. My name is Ladina Ambrin. I graduated in 2006. I know very few of you. <laughs> Um, whenever I first graduated, it was really difficult at that time uh, to find a job because I moved across the country and didn't have any connections. So I took um, a couple of jobs just to make money and was not working in my career field um, for a few years. But then I finished my master's in business administration. Here I got a communication major and business minor. Um, was able to move back closer to home. I live in Lexington, Kentucky now, and finally got on um, with MetLife as an insurance salesperson. Um, liked that pretty good, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to help people more, so I started working towards investment management, wealth management advising, and ended up getting my CFP um, last year in 2017. So I now work for US Bank as a wealth management advisor and certified financial planner. And I work with clients to help them uh, recognize and articulate goals they have financially and for life and monitor strategies, devise plans to help them get there and ultimately reach those goals. I'm Buddy Forbes. Um, I graduated in 2017, I think. Uh, it was a long road for me. I was here for a while. I didn't at all. I think I started in 2010, if that tells you anything about my life. Um, mine was a little different. When I graduated, I already had a job. So I had been working at the News Express as a journalist for three years when I graduated. Um, but then I did take a new job this summer. I am currently working for Berea College of Higher Education in the Europe. It's like a grant. You guys don't care this, right? Um, basically, we work in the public school systems to try to teach kids how they can get to where they want to be as far as colleges and careers. So basically, I'm kind of like a guidance counselor, but they have a very long title for it. Um, and I work in John Street, so I'm still very liberal. Well, for those of you who don't know, my name is Fallon Salmon. Um, I graduated in 2017. I'm currently getting my master's in healthcare and administration. And my journey after um, college was actually pretty simple. Um, with the connections that I made here, I had gotten asked to basically apply for the admissions position. Um, I received that, and then just a little under a month ago, I had um, accepted a new position here as a student success advisor. So I've been around UK for seven years now, and I love it. Hello, uh, my name is Robert Walsh. A lot of y'all know me. 
Um, I graduated this past spring um, with a communication and film media arts degree. Um, my journey is pretty much simple too. Just afterwards, after I graduated, I uh, decided to um, pursue my master's in communication at Northern Tech University. And uh, one thing about that is when you're an undergrad, basically you're obtaining all this information that you're learning in the classroom. And with graduate school, you're applying it. So really, it's a lot more fun in my opinion just because you actually get to apply it and um, target what your interests are and what you want to study. So that's a little bit about me. My name is Chris Big. I just graduated this past spring. Um, I kind of left college a little bit earlier than most. During the spring semester, I took the opportunity to go to Frankfurt for an internship where I worked with the lobbyists. During that time, I talked to some of my friends back in my hometown of Louisville, kind of connected with them. They all worked at Enterprise. And once I graduated, before I graduated, actually, I had already applied for the job, gotten it. So I started my path after college as a management trainee in their training program at Enterprise Rental And then just three weeks ago, I got the opportunity to get a little promotion. I'm now on the truck rental side, so I do more of like business, business sales. Working more with like decision makers of companies and just retail deals. Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is Sean Ryan. Uh, I graduated in December 2014. I'm from Chico, California. Uh, I guess after I got done with my communication degree here, moved back home, uh, coached two years of high school baseball, um, and then two years at a junior college called Feather River. I moved back here about a month and a half ago, and I am the graduate assistant the baseball program here at e-bike. My name is Marianne Fletcher. I am a reporter for WYMT for CBS station out in Hazard. I was a fifth year. I graduated in 2016 with a major in communication and a minor in film media arts. My sophomore year was the first year that we even started the film media arts program. And I knew that I wanted to do something like this. But I really wasn't sure. Throughout my time, um, going through school and projects and everything, I learned where my niche really was. Uh, my junior year, I had an internship with WYMT, which I believe really helped me, uh, I guess, walk in a job there. By the time I graduated, I had a job, I moved to Hazard, I lived there for two years. Now I'm back here. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Brittany LeRae and I work at East Kentucky Broadcasting. I graduated in 2014, started school in 2008 as an education major and decided to go a different route. Um, so it took me like six years to finally graduate and get out of here, so I drove Shannon pretty crazy for a while. But now I'm at EKB and I'm actually one of the on-air personalities on the WDHR morning show. I also do marketing sales and uh, all the promos, ads, all of that fun stuff. So I kind of wear many hats at EKB. And I didn't decide I wanted to do this until after taking public speaking and mass media. I actually worked in nonprofit before I went into media. So I've done a little bit of both and I'm happy where I am. Hello, I am Lisa Hampton. I graduated from UMI in 2012. And I am currently the 55 Plus Club Coordinator and Marketing Assistant at Community Trust Bank. Um, this is my second job since graduating. I had, a, um, I had an opportunity after I graduated to go overseas. So while I was overseas studying abroad, I actually applied for my first full-time job and started two days after I got home. And I worked there for about two years at the Southeast Kentucky Chamber, um, which is a local nonprofit. And then I have been at Community Trust Bank since 2014. So um, there I do all of, mostly all of our internal events and I do some advertising. I do work with, very closely with Brittany and Marianne, so, and with Buddy for the most part while he was at the newspaper. So um, yeah, you definitely need to get to know your classmates if you don't know any of them because you may need them. <laughs> My name is Ty Compton. I graduated in uh, 2011, and I, I came as a transfer student to Pikeville and was 
on a business track when I first started. So decided late uh, my last semester of college actually that I wanted to change to communication. So it took me a little, a little extra time, an extra year, a full summer to switch over um, and get my communication degree. I have a minor in business from here as well. Uh, I worked part time with our basketball program while I was in school. Uh, at that time, we had one full time assistant. Uh, I was a part time assistant. We had our head coach. So, kind of spun that role into a full time role once I was finished and have been here ever since. I'm the associate head coach for our men's basketball program now. Um, have, have been here and never left. Have many different roles from part time student assistant to graduate assistant to full-time assistant, now to associate head coach. So I've, I've done several things within our program that have been associated with the program uh, for all 10 years uh, that I've been in Pikeville. And uh, Lisa is my wife. So uh, <laughs> communication kind of led us together too and we've been started that journey. Explain how, how, more in depth, like how it's different from undergrad. Yeah, but Rob's doing a traditional program on, on campus. Well, um, I don't know if other people were um, with communication for their masters, but for me personally, the way it's different is obviously for undergrad, you know, you have your general ed classes and then you take your core classes and you graduate, you know, four years, you're good. Um, most universities, when they do the grad school, it's usually a year and a half to two year program. Uh, for NKU, they, uh, they have three options. They have a thesis option, a capstone option, or a comprehensive exam option for leaving. And um, you have to do one of those three. So if you're pursuing your doctorate, um, most professors prefer that you do a thesis. Uh, for me personally, I'll probably just do the comprehensive exams when that time comes. But another thing that's different too is that you're not taking gen ed classes in graduate school. It's strictly what you're targeting, like what you're getting your master's in. So if it's guidance counseling, you're going to take like maybe family communication or something like that. Um, so me personally, uh, I'm taking interpersonal this semester in a pro sim class, which is just an introductory class. You know, that is kind of similar. You know, when you had um, an introductory class for any major, whether it's biology, psychology, um, doesn't matter. That's kind of a, a similarity that's there. Um, I didn't know if anyone else wanted to share about graduate school or anything about their experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to get I do my, my program is all online. I don't know if you all heard of Capella University. Um, it's pretty easy, actually. I would, if you want to do online, I would do that. Because, like, before I came here, I'd write two papers and two discussions I just got over with before I came and I don't have anything to do for the rest of the week. So, um, but it's, it's a lot of writing and definitely, definitely pay attention to your AP writing skills because that's all you use. All, that's all you're going to use. Trust me. And if you don't like writing and you want to go to graduate school, you better get used to writing. Because that's literally all I do. Not, there's no tests, there are no quizzes, there are, there's nothing. Just uh, one of my classes had to turn in a 30 page paper over communication theory. So imagine how fun that is. Because um, uh, apparently you need a lot of communication also when you're trying to be a nonprofit leader, management person. I don't even know what I'm doing. So. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to get out of there and all for real. Um, but it's a lot of writing and, and reading, so I hate reading, so I have to learn to like that, or you just have to learn how to be really smart and just skim. But for the most part, if you, if you want to for real go to graduate school, you have to have some discipline because until I met Chandra, I had little to no discipline. And um, I changed my major about four times before. I was late to every class, if I showed up, um, but Chandra was really good about keeping on my back about that. 
made me got chips when I got here, but I was on time for once. So, learn how to, I'm more punctual now. You have to be, because the deadline's here. You can change when I let you slide, but you go to graduate school, you, <laughs> you get a zero, and they don't care. They really don't care. You can cry and call them. You can have your mom call them. They're going to cuss her out, too. <laughs> I did online study too, um, and you do have to be very purposeful, very disciplined to get that done. And like she said, there's a lot of reading and writing, but where I did my uh, master's in business, we also actually had a lot of testing quizzes too. Um, so the way that it was done, while you can sort of do it on your own time, a lot of my teachers had something that had to be due on Tuesday and a quiz on Thursday night. and. A research project with your team that had to be turned in the following Monday so you had to learn to really work in groups a lot more because we had a lot of group projects and coordinate your time and schedule with them and um, do your end of the project and have faith that your team was going to do the rest of it otherwise you all did not complete the task and got an incomplete so choose the people you study with carefully how many in here are actually The best way to go about getting your master's is to try to find like a graduate assistant position um, because it allows you to go to school, work a little bit, gain a couple of skills, and then be able to potentially stay on campus or maybe get free housing and get a stipend. Um, so I definitely check out certain things like that or maybe a job that will pay for it because um, who wants to inquire more student loan? I hope none of you raise your hand, but, <laughs> um, but that's just my suggestion. Other questions? Put my time in with the company. 
So if you have an additional portfolio, that's the best thing for you, but you sometimes get the job you don't necessarily want at first, and you just kind of have to work your way up the ladder. Yeah, I can actually <laughs> attest to that. I was a producer, an overnight producer, for the longest time. Everyone knew that I didn't like it, but I was hard at it. Regardless if I didn't like the position that I had, I knew that I needed to do that to work my way up. I knew that I needed to prove, I guess, my worth. Yeah, let's get it to that, yes. that front yes. side. So for the print side, it's very much the same as what Marianne said. You know, when you go to apply for a job, you have to have something that shows what you can do. For me, that was the journalism portfolio that we put together in Interest Journalism. So all of the Bear Facts articles that I had, I put them together for her class, and I just kept it and used that when I applied at News Express. And I, building off of what she said about doing what you have to until you get the job you want, um, I got started as a sports journalist for a paper in Nico County. And if you guys know me, I know nothing about sports, so <laughs> it was so much fun. I learned everything that I knew in the three years that I worked for the sports journalist, as a sports journalist. So working as, doing that and putting what I learned from the university into play, they saw that they liked my writing, they offered me a job in news here at the News Express. So it's really, I mean, it's about what you're learning here, what you're doing now, and putting that all together to sell to someone, hey, you need me on your team. How about a shameless plug for your other half-life? On my podcast, no <laughs> I also have a podcast. Uh, it's called Appalach. Uh, it's just about the Appalachian region and people who are working to change the narrative of Appalachia. And I also use that now as part of my portfolio. So, like, I have one website that everything goes to. So you go there for my blog, you go there for my podcast, all those things are building a resume for me. So when someone wants to hire me for something, I can say, here's everything I've ever done. Alexis, do you want to comment any on the radio? On the radio, okay. Um, <laughs> so at our, my title is, I'm sorry, I'm getting over a cold. <clears throat> my title is, uh, I'm the director of traffic. It's not the traffic that you think. <laughs> uh, so basically, <laughs> it's really not that fun. But, um, so I basically, I get all these commercials and I drag them, put them where they need to run, and that's where they go. So much fun. Uh, but before that, I had really exciting jobs. I worked actually in the heart of Atlanta, so I was working for, uh, I worked for a TV agency, so if you're watching a football game and you see a Hardee's commercial that comes on, you know, they, they can track who all is watching it, and then we get ratings, and then we go back to the client, which is Hardee's, and if they're happy, they'll pay us, if they're not, they don't. So you have to make it, you have to make it up, they're called make goods, so like a commercial, like, have y'all ever watched a commercial and halfway through it, it cuts off, and then it goes to another commercial? Well, that's a problem. So it, it shows that it would show up in my system as like something didn't run as, or something aired that wasn't supposed to. So then we have to go back and, and so let's say, let's say a football game is, is rated at a four, which is pretty high. So, um, so we, we have to find another, another football game or like Modern Family or something that was also at a four rating and put that back in on TV. TV is way harder than radio. Radio, they don't, like where I work, there, there are no ratings. Um, we just kind of have people that log in on uh, streaming online and they can, they can tally who all's on there. Um, I mean, I also do some voice, like voices for commercials, and um, I give away prizes, and if people don't pick up concert tickets, I, keep, I get to keep them. Um, I sit at the front desk, so everybody loves me. Um, I mean, it's pretty exciting, I guess, working for, because I, I live in, it's not as small as this town, but it's pretty small. So, um, if anybody has questions about small town radio, I got you. Other questions? Just hold this. <laughs> Anyone? Brayden? Talk 
about uh, reading and writing being skills that you have to really use uh, for graduate school and also everyday life. Are there any skills that you didn't see being as useful or as common as uh, you would have expected that we need at home? I work with a lot of senior citizens, 
I'm here interested in in common with them other than you know they go to the bank about every day and I work at the bank so um, I have to build that uh, that relationship with them and be able to talk to them on a, pretty much on a daily basis uh, I honestly I have two different spectrums I work with I work with the seniors in Redwood and all counties and then I work with the high school football team uh, coordinating the community trust bank of UYMG Pike County Bowl. So, I mean, I have two separate, very different groups of people that I speak to, and it is very hard to talk to the football uh, coaches the same way I would the senior citizens uh, of Pike County and Austin. So, in that, you, you definitely need to be able to interact and be on their level uh, I know nothing about football, and everything pretty much that I've learned about football has been in the last five years almost. <laughs> so uh, you definitely need to learn how to talk to different people. Personality, you just need some recordings of your voice, but 
Just make sure you guys know how important you are because that's real, that's that's super serious. Because I went out and I didn't think I would. I thought, especially going into a big city like Atlanta, I was like, it's a little baby. So just you're important. So just going off of that, like when you almost inevitably do change jobs after graduating, because I'm sure it's gonna happen for most of you, you're gonna be very shocked at what you pick up that you don't even realize. So while you can work on these things at home, these certain things in. There are all these other things that are going on that you're going to pick up, and you're not going to know until you have to use them. So, like now that I'm working with students, because before, if you asked me last year, I would have been a newspaper forever, because if anyone knows me, I love journalism, right? But now that I'm working with students, I'm picking up a bunch of different things that I never realized that I would, like from the elective classes that we had, like line and reception, or advanced public speaking, just some of the weird things that you, you don't have to do, but you can when you're a communication major. They really build things into you that you don't realize that you have until you have to use them. So I think it's important to focus on these specific things and realize that you need them to go wherever you want to go. But there are so many other things that you are picking up that you're going to tap into at some point. So like, don't stress about it. Because <laughs> you know, I wasn't like an A student, but I got out of here a lot. And that's all that really matters. <laughs> is how to listen. Like that, that will make you more valuable than anything any of us have said at this point. Because if you can learn to listen and you don't have to be told multiple times what to do, how to do it, and have to be walked through each and every step of whatever it is, like that will make you the most valuable employee that your boss has. Like we, we talk about communication being, uh, you know, what we give or what comes out. And it really, you know, not to pick on them again, but we talk about that all the time, is that like part of communication, it has to be interpreted and it has to be taken in or else it does us no good to, to give it away. You know, it does us no good to talk, it does us no good to write something, it does us no good if we can't learn to interpret whatever is being communicated to us. You know, if we don't hear what's being said, if we don't take it in, uh, if we have to repeat ourselves, like that, that's another part of, you know, luckily in your, your public speaking classes, your other things, you, you get to hear a lot of other people talk about things that may not necessarily be of high interest to you at that time. But it, it teaches you to be open-minded, and it also teaches you to listen and learn things that maybe you aren't necessarily interested in at the time, that the exact thing they're talking about isn't important, but at some point you're gonna to have to sit in front of somebody and interpret what they're saying, and it may be something you have no interest in, maybe something that you have no knowledge in, uh, but the ability to just listen and, and formulate a plan or a response or whatever they may, that may be, like that will take you a lot further uh, than even a lot of the stuff I, me, and everybody else has, has spoke about already. It's just the ability and willingness to listen to what's being communicated as well. That's a huge, huge piece that doesn't get talked about very often.
be like when I graduated. I had no idea. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know what was real. So that's something that's going to hit you all really hard and something that you all really need to think about um, as far as, you know, what you're going to do um, as far as, like, post-grad, whatever it is that you, you know, you have your desires to do. Um, you know, Ty was lucky to, to work his way up as a student in his position. You know, Mary Ann had her, or her internship with um, WIMT and worked her way up. So you're probably, you may end up scrubbing toilets somewhere and finally you will get a job, you know, higher up paying more. But you have to start from the bottom and work your way up. Um, that's something I definitely had to learn and it was really hard for me. You know, with my internship and my work study and things like that, you know, I literally was serving toilets. And I had to prove myself that I was actually worth my time. I actually used to work at a smaller radio station here at Boxy 94.3, and I left to go to EKB and took a huge pay cut just because they were offering me an on-air position along with doing some programming and some promotional work, which is what I wanted to do. So I basically threw my hands up and was like, you know what, I'll take the cup because eventually I'm going to get the experience I need because I don't want to be in Pikeville forever. I'm going to move on out west. And I can't do that being in sales the whole time. So I took the cup and I'm working my way up and I've already got a raise and I've only been there for four months. So it's kind of working itself out. And before that, I took it, I had a good paycheck and I was a nonprofit to get a bigger pay cut to move into the media. Media is not fun unless you're in sales because you really, you're not going to make the pay unless you've got that commission rolling in too. Other questions? Anyone? Nothing for me. <laughs> Any final comments? Number four. Oh, I'll say this. You wish somebody had told you when you were a student still? While you're a student, be a student. I worked my butt off when I was in college. And I'm still working my butt off. <laughs> but I do wish I would have took, you know, a Friday and come down to, like, movie night or something. You know, I do wish that I was more, I was very involved in extracurricular activities, but I wish I was more involved in, in the funner side of things. And, uh, you know, also, one thing that I want to really drive home is if you have the opportunity to study abroad, Lisa can attest to this, do it. Do it. 100%. It, it, it will be like one of the best times of your entire life. You'll learn so much more than you ever expected you will in a classroom, and it is the best. <laughs> Something I wish I would have focused more on was the mock interview stuff that a lot of you guys do here in Capstone, because I was actually talking to Rob about this after I did my interview for my promotion. It was literally just, it was the easiest interview I've been through, because they grill you here, they try to get you to open up, but the more personal you are, going to that interview just saying, you know what, I've been through words. I came out of it and I was like, this was a joke. Like, I thought this was an interview, not just like a talk. Because a lot of times, like the inter mock interview that you're going to do here, it's more drilling you with questions. When you go in for a job, it's more of getting to know you, like what kind of person you are, if you're going to work out for that team. You kind of want to just go in there with some confidence, but you don't want that. You want to be overconfident. So you don't want to go in there thinking, I'm the best person for this job. If I don't get it, this is BS. You want to go in there and have a high head be like, listen, I know I'm good for this job. If I don't get it, I can move on. But there's no point. Because one of the questions a lot of times will ask you is, what if you don't get this job? But if you just shut down right there and tell them, I don't know what I'm going to do, you're not going to get hired right there. Because they know that you're not going to be motivated to find work hard in that environment. Uh, one of the most important things I can think of here on campus, not only if you're not a comm major or anything, you have resources. Use them. Um, for me personally, I couldn't tell you how many times I've been in a mutual manager's office trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. Um, just last fall, even when I was thinking about going to graduate school, 
I mean, they're, everyone's here to help you, and obviously the ultimate goal is to graduate and get a job. So, so the job I'm working at now, I work with grades two through eight to try to talk about who they want to be when they grow up, when they're here in this room. And something that I stress to them now is that it's okay not to know, and I think that's important for you guys to know too. Most of us on this panel, we still don't know what we want to be when we grow up. Like, we, we're here, but that doesn't mean we know anything about our lives. So, like, things are going to change. Whatever you want to be right now may be different once you finish. And that's okay. Like, don't let it throw you off, because you're going to find your way there eventually. And you're looking for things here to be able to do that. And it's okay whenever you change jobs not to know a lot about that, because once you're in that job, you learn so much. There's education opportunities within that career field that you can keep diving into until you really are an expert in what you're doing. So it's okay not to know everything whenever you enter in. Enjoy those late classes that you have now. Or days where you don't have a class. Because um, it's, like it's like having an 8 a.m. every day. Every day is an 8 a.m. class, okay? You don't get to sleep ever. Not even on the weekends, because then your body is used to waking up at 7.30, and then you're up at 7.30 on a Saturday, and you can't go back to sleep. And enjoy Always. the naps. Yeah, please. Nap time uh, is amazing. Please have fun. Don't get in at all. It's not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. That is so fun. It is fun, though. <laughs>